In addition to the EVs, we'll also uh, fill in uh, solar PV uh, to the rooftop of the building. There's going to be a relatively large uh, solar PV installation at around 120 square meters. Uh, we've estimated that's going to produce about 15,000 kilowatt hours a year. This is the figure that's been communicated in the press releases. For me, this is a very conservative figure. I guess uh, people want to be not over-promising things. Um, this is calculated to be around 30% of the uh, building uh, electricity need, uh, excluding the apartments. Uh, so the uh, electricity is going to be fed in and used for the charging of the EV. It's going to be used for uh, uh, the uh, stair lights, uh, the lighting, and those kind of things. And obviously, uh, what we want to test here is the possibility uh, of feeding back uh, the uh, surplus uh, to our grid. What we see is that uh, in past, the, uh, the uh, generation structure, electricity generation structure, has been a very dominantly a waterfall model where you have big power plants producing electricity and then that flows through the grid and different substations uh, finally to the end consumed. So it it's, has been quite a one-way flow and that's the status of today as well. In the future, we see that uh, the localized uh, distributed generation will have an increasing role. So in the future energy, uh, energy system, it's uh, very likely that it's going to be a balance so with, with large-scale production and small-scale production which is distributed around the grid. And this gives us now a concrete way of testing that. What does it mean for the grid? Uh, <coughs> this, uh, uh, generation uh, uh, back to the grid. <coughs> for this large consumption site, yes, you can solve, you can uh, have question that how much will actually ever go back to the grid. And that's a fair question. However, we're looking at our uh, climate and our culture here, you could say that the, the peak production is prone to happen at midsummer, which is also the time when this town gets deserted. Everybody moves away. They go to their summer houses or wherever. So there will actually not be too many people inside the uh, building as well. So those kind of uh, momentaneous times will happen when we will have a uh, generation that's going to flow back to the grid as well. Solar energy as, uh, as a form of energy uh, generation is very interesting for us. We can see a lot of development happening in that space. Uh, the efficiency rates are getting better. The, as the volumes are getting higher, also the prices are getting lower. Uh, our R&D guys uh, made actually a calculation uh, that, that saying that you, you would be able to produce all of the energy uh, used in Finland in a solar panel system which uh, dimensioning 25 kilometers by 25 kilometers. That would be enough. That would generate the, the total energy volume. Not hour by hour, but uh, on a, let's say, settlement uh, way. And to me, I mean, 25, yeah, it's a big, big area, but uh, it's not <laughs> totally sort of out of the blue. So this is sort of saying that <coughs> we've, we've heard a lot of uh, the fancy plans and very important plans of building, uh, you know, desert sun have, uh, you know, cover all of Sahara with uh, solar panels and then you can solve the world's problems and just steer here. Yes, that is very, very interesting. But even here in Nordic countries, this is an interesting area and we can see a lot of potential for this. Coming then uh, closer to, uh, to the topic of the day, to the uh, measurement that uh, we will build a quite comprehensive energy database for the uh, tenants in, the, in this building. We will have uh, from each apartment, uh, we will collect on real-time basis uh, uh, measurement data on their electricity uh, consumption, on their thermal energy consumption, uh, on hot water consumption and cold water consumption. All of these are going to be measured uh, on real-time basis from each apartment. 
then there will be a number of points in the uh, building as such which are going to be measured, such as the uh, solar PV uh, generation, how much is, is that producing, the total electricity consumption of the house, uh, heat consumption of the house, the EV charging, how much is that going to uh, produce. Uh, Connect is uh, providing uh, the house with the uh, very energy efficient elevator, uh, so we're going to measure also the elevator consumption and elevator generation. That, that elevator is, uh, can generate uh, uh, electricity as well. So these kind of things are going to be uh, measured. Uh, for this measurement uh, solution, we are now uh, cooperating deeply with Basen and, and using Basen's technology in uh, getting that data uh, and analyzing that data and also for creating the visualization of that data for the end consumers. We're going to visualize the data for the end consumers uh, through a web portal uh, where they can see the real time versus uh, historics, have their trend analysis, uh, get more sort of uh, feel of what they've been using. But we will also provide a local display, an in home display uh, solution to each apartment. And uh, this is for us to test uh, uh, really the the uh, differences and the role of push information versus pull information. And with that I mean uh, but there is a number of studies done earlier saying that if you need to do something to get that data, that all already means that you are interested in it. You need to make an effort. Versus pull, uh, push data is something that is it's there. You walk by your car, uh, one of your rooms, if, if it's in a kitchen or in a living room, wherever, just you know, from the corner of your eye, you can see that it, it's there. You don't need to make any, you don't need to log in, you don't need to remember a single password, you don't need to push a button, you can just see whether everything is okay or whether there's something fishy going on. Uh, and uh, make them, if you become interested, then it's easy to go to the web and uh, search for more data and sort of see what's, what's going on. So, this is something that we want to test in this. It's been uh, often said uh, that uh, what really makes the customer tick is money. I mean, we need to translate this into a cost. And uh, in this case, what we aim to do is we aim to also uh, uh, show the consumption in terms of money. But we will not only show it in terms of money, it will be concrete money. As the uh, building company has decided that they will actually charge both water and thermal energy based on their actual consumptions. And this now becomes available through the uh, base and system that we can actually provide that data uh, for the building so that they can do that uh, invoicing. So this will concretely mean that if, if you choose to set your room temperature to a certain level versus some, something else, that will show in your actual cost. And this will be interesting to see how the customers will, what, what will be the impact of that uh, to the customers. All in all, so this, this leads to the fact that what we try to do and achieve here is to provide the tools for these tenants to really make a concrete connection of their behavior to their energy consumption. It was a couple of years back when I was sitting in a plane uh, flying back to Finland and uh, I just happened to be seated with uh, a guy from a construction company and we just started talking and he was very frustrated. He had been uh, coming, uh, this company had been building uh, these uh, passive houses, net, uh, uh, low energy and passive houses and they've done a lot of work uh, to be able to sort of make that energy consumption as low as possible. And then he was saying that, and when people move in, what do they do? They open up all of the windows to, to you know, get fresh air, because that's what they've done always. So much for the passivity, and so much for the energy, low energy consumption. And I think these kind of things, people don't know. But through this kind of a solution, there starts to be tools for people to understand. That if I open up the window, that will actually mean something to me. You could probably get even a, in a due course of time, you can even calculate that, okay, opening the window will cost me this much money.
we made a study uh, uh, earlier on about people, how much time people are interested and willing to spend uh, for energy related uh, uh, issues. And it was uh, below 10 hours a year. People do not want to think about electricity or energy. That just needs to be there. So for getting the uh, impact, uh, things need to be easy. And as, as one such attempt, uh, each of the apartments in this building will be equipped with a home and away uh, functionality. Uh, basically, there's going to be a separate button uh, in, uh, uh, by the door when you leave the, your apartment. And by pressing that button, uh, it will automatically turn off all of the lights. It will uh, turn cold uh, some of the uh, electricity outlets, typically those where you're most concerned, where your coffee machine is, where your iron is, and these kind of things. So it has a little bit of a uh, security aspect to it. But on top of that, it will also impact the thermostats of the, uh, of the apartment. So it will reduce the temperature of the, uh, of the apartment by two to three degrees C. Uh, with the, uh, uh, with the logic that as nobody's gonna be there, so why heat it up? And through the system, we will be able to show uh, the uh, tenants that, okay, this actually did save you this much. <coughs> there will be also different uh, convenience levels and uh, different other uh, functionalities whereby the, the customers can adjust and uh, choose their uh, level of energy uh, consumption. We hope to be able to combine also the hourly pricing uh, of electricity into this system. Uh, we're moving in Finland to a system where everybody, including uh, residential private customers, will be able to buy electricity directly from Moodle, from the wholesale market. So we will be able to offer customers pricing based on hourly scheme. So there will be a different price for different hour of every single day and every single year. This data will now be visualized for these uh, customers, even though they will, in the beginning, typically have some sort of a fixed uh, pricing. But uh, hopefully, in future, we will be able to connect it so that we can start steering some of the devices. Technology is already there. And this is only a fraction of what we're doing at bottom uh, just as a glimpse of a little bit larger scale stuff <coughs> we are involved in a, in a larger project in, uh, in Stockholm uh, called the Royal, Stockholm Royal Seaport where there's going to be a, a totally new uh, city district uh, being built. Uh, this is an aerial photo of, of the state. So this is a region and basically this part is going to be newly built uh, starting now and uh, with the ambition of having that ready by 2030 uh, and they are in the city of Stockholm they have uh, quite uh, ambitious targets uh, for the, uh, climate, uh, uh, climate mitigation and climate, uh, uh, let's say sustainability CO2 levels uh, and are pursuing that uh, the target of having the whole Royal Seaport area totally fossil free uh, by 2030. So this is a kind of a, if we have, if we're involved in a, let's say, very focused, uh, concrete, hands-on project like one building in Macula, this represents the, the other side of it, uh, where we have the pleasure to get in, having, let's say, a totally new city areas, having, having that sort of stuff. So we're going to build uh, similar kind of things, having the smart homes, having distributed uh, generation there, having EV charging solutions. Uh, what we're also looking there is to, to plug in the uh, ferry boats, so like really electricity grid, to avoid them uh, uh, using their diesel engines to, to generate the electricity that, that, that the ship needs when it's docked, uh, uh, those kind of things. Uh, so it's gonna be a very large, very large uh, undertaking. So with that, I uh, want to thank you for, for your attention and I hope you get uh, a glimpse of what we're doing at Fotomini's area. Thank you very much.